Hi guys, it's HBYT, and today we're talking about the Amazfit GTR smartwatch. I've been using this now for the last couple of days, and in this video, I'm gonna show you what happened in the very quick unboxing, and then I'm gonna give you my overall first impressions review on how I've got on with it in the time I've had it. So if you're interested in possibly buying one, then stay tuned because I'm gonna tell you all you need to know. So without further ado, let's get straight to it. If you're new to the channel and love everything tech, news, unboxings, reviews, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and ding that notification bell so that every time I post a video, you are notified and can stay up to date with all of the latest tech. Now, even though I have got this product incredibly early, I will leave a link in the video description below for where you can go and purchase it if you like the look of it after watching this video or if you just want a bit more information. Right, so this is the Amazfit GTR smartwatch. Now, I'm gonna use the term smartwatch lightly because there are certain elements about this actual device that fit more into the kind of fitness tracker Fitbit kind of area of the market. And while overall I've been really, really impressed and I'm really enjoying using it, it's got some really great features, but there's a few downsides that you need to know as well. Right, so a bit of backstory, the Amazfit watches have been growing in popularity over the last few years. They're created, and excuse my pronunciation, by a company called Huami, which is kind of under the Xiaomi umbrella, but not, as far as I'm aware, directly produced, manufactured by them. It all gets very confusing when there are so many companies involved. As a result, there may be a few different names for this individual product. The long name would be Xiaomi, Huami, Amazfit, GTR. That's too much, so I'm just going to call it the Amazfit GTR. Right, so let's get straight to the unboxing. Then we're going to jump onto design and build quality, and then I'm going to get onto specs, key features, pros and cons, and how I've got on with it. Right, so inside the black box, we have a white box. As soon as we lift the lid on that, we straight away see the actual watch, and underneath the text, move beautifully. Underneath that section, we have the USB charger, which just plonks on the underneath of the watch via a magnet, and it's dead easy to do. There's nothing else in my individual box, and that is because I've got this product very early and it is a kind of reviewers unit. As far as I'm aware, this isn't the retail box and you will get manuals and all that sort of goodness as well. Right, so let's jump on to the actual design. Now there are two different colors. There is this kind of space gray and brown strap version and there is also a silver face version as well. Now originally I actually quite like the look of the silver one, but having said that, now this space gray one has arrived I'm really, really digging it. And I actually think that this is now my favorite color. I love the fact that it is not only a smart watch, but it looks really classy. It looks like a normal standard watch. And that is how I like my smart watches to be. I don't really like sports watches on the whole. They have their purpose, don't get me wrong, but as a daily watch, I love this clean and classic look. The actual strap is really clever as well. It has the leather look to it on the outside, but underneath it is actually a kind of silicon rubber and therefore great for durability, you can use it when playing sport, and of course if you want swimming as well because it is 50 meters water resistant. We have two buttons on the watch as well. The top button actually allows you to turn on and off the display, but you can using the associated app, which we'll touch on in more detail in a bit. You can set it to raise to wake, changing the sensitivity, and of course the actual timeout of the display as well. And you can also double tap the watch face as well in order for it to wake, although weirdly this only works if the watch has been in use in the very near past otherwise if it's gone completely to sleep you have to actually activate the watch first and then when you turn the watch face off if you double tap it it comes on a little bit bizarre don't know why they've done that and certainly something they could improve along those lines we now jump onto the second button and this is basically a shortcut button to a specific area of the watch that you want as an example, notifications, which is something that I will probably switch it to because you can actually customize where that button takes you to. However, again, this button only works when you are on the home watch face. If you're in the menu, in as an example, the workout section, if you press it and would like to go through to your notifications or your step count or anything like that, it just doesn't work. And that's not saying this watch is faulty because it has worked how they've designed it to flawlessly so far. It's just there's a few interesting choices that they've made from a software perspective. The actual watch face is made of aluminium alloy and stainless steel, and it, it feels and looks really premium. Now that watch face is a 1.3 inch AMOLED display with a PPI density of 326 or retina level, resolution of 454 
by 454. It's made of Corning Gorilla Glass and has an anti-fingerprint coating. And I'm actually quite impressed with that display overall compared to other smartwatches that I've tested. It's got built-in GPS, Bluetooth 5.0, and it's got a 410 mAh battery capacity. Now, speaking of the watch face, you can actually change and customize how your face looks. The best way to do that is to go to the app, and that's what we're gonna go to right now because I'm gonna show you how easy it is to actually set up this watch with your smartphone. Firstly, you need to establish a connection, of course, and when you first turn on your watch, it'll give you a QR code. This, in my experience, didn't work. Again, I don't know whether this is because it's a reviewer's unit, but I just went to the Google Play Store, downloaded the Amazfit app, and added this specific watch. And doing it that way, the setup was flawless. Once you've then connected via Bluetooth, you're greeted firstly with the home page, which underneath you've got your watch face settings. Now you can actually change the watch faces on the app and there's a fair few choices on there. It's not quite as customizable as again Wear OS where you can go to the Play Store and download new watch faces. But I personally think there's enough choice to keep you satisfied. You've got your battery percentage right at the top. And speaking of battery, this is a hugely, hugely important bit of information. They claim it's got up to 25 days worth of normal use, not just standby time of normal everyday use. That's incredible. Now, while I can't say I've had it long enough to physically test that, the battery has been amazing so far. You've basically now got a smartwatch which almost doesn't need to be charged. I mean, I mean it does, but you get the idea. Again, you can customize your settings for incoming calls, event reminders, watch alarm, app alerts, idle alerts, and just watch alerts in general. Now, in the app alerts, once you actually select it to connect and allow notifications from your specific social media apps, for example, like what WhatsApp and Twitter, Instagram, your emails, then you will start getting notifications straight to your watch. Now, speaking of notifications, unfortunately, due to the software, you can't actually go in and respond to those notifications. You will have to then go to your phone to do that, but that is one of the limitations of this style of software compared to Google's Wear OS. Having said that, I've used Wear OS watches before, and I still, even though I get the notifications on those watches and can actually respond to them via the watch, I still use my phone. I don't like typing, for example, on a tiny watch face, kind of defeats the object of speeding things up. It just gives you a really easy notification to see, and you can then decide whether it's important, whether to get your phone out of your pocket or not. Also with those notifications, and some people have asked before, especially on my Mi Band 4 review, is whether emojis from WhatsApp or Twitter or Instagram actually come through and display properly on the watch. They don't, they come through as two question marks. It displays in color the actual icon of the specific app that it's sending you the notification from, i.e. Instagram, Twitter, etc. And that looks great, but emojis aren't displayed in their proper form, which again is not a deal breaker for me, but something they could improve. And also on the app, you're able to track your sleep data as well. One such app you can allow connectivity with is of course YouTube Music. So if you have a YouTube Music account, for example, you can actually control your music through your watch. So I'm just gonna briefly scroll through the different sections on the watch. So if we scroll down from the top, you have your kind of setting section. And firstly, you've got a do not disturb button. So at nighttime, it will stop vibrating, for example, which is really handy. You've got your uh, brightness, which you can set to automatic like I have, or you can set your individual brightness preference. I tend to keep it on auto brightness. You've also got a torch icon, which basically when you press it, it lights up the watch face bright white. So you've got a bit of light if you're in a dark and dank place. Dark and dank. You've got a battery saver icon, although personally, I don't think you're ever really gonna need that. 24 days to really pick a day that you need to charge it. Shouldn't have too many problems. And you've got a lock icon where you can only open the watch face by pressing the on and off button at the top right hand side as opposed to using raise to wake etc if we scroll to the right we've got our heart rate monitor which seems pretty accurate and if we scroll right again we've got our step counter the same two features come up if you scroll left so just personal preference are you a lefty or a righty if we scroll up we have status heart rate workout activities weather music notifications alarm event reminder more and settings so under status is of course your step count calories burned etc if you want to go back you simply scroll to the right so we've got another place to access your heart rate monitor you've got a workout section so you've got outdoor running walking outdoor cycling treadmill indoor cycling open water swimming pool swimming elliptical trainer 
climbing, trail running, skiing, and just exercise. So plenty of different sports that you can actually set it up to monitor how you are performing. You've got an activity section, which there isn't anything in there because I just sit on my bum currently. You've got your weather section, which basically gives you a current temperature and a weather icon. It also gives you wind information. That's weather wind, not stop it. Humidity, and it also gives you a sunrise and a sunset time as well, which I think is really handy. And then you've got upcoming weather days as well, in which it gives you five days information in advance. As stated, you've got your music app underneath, you've got your notifications there, you've got alarm, event reminder, under more you've got compass, timer, countdown, find mobile. All in all, a few sort of quirks and a few things they can improve aside. I think it's a really, really great product. And I'm certainly gonna be using this as my daily watch, not only for the features that it has, but also the way it looks, the design, the really sort of classy smart look that I personally go for in a watch. As stated at the start, I will leave a link to this product in the video description below with the best price currently around right now. So you can go through and buy it or just get more information if you so wish. Here's where you guys come in. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about the Maze Fit GTR. Is it something that you like the look of? Are you going to go and buy it? Or is there a product out there that you think is actually better? Like and share if you did enjoy this video and find it helpful. Subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you're new to the channel and want to be notified every time I post a video, I do weekly tech content, breaking news, unboxings, reviews. I'll love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Tesbyotp, peace out.